So around a thousand of you lovely subscribers arrived at this channel after I told a story to Pete on the Tyrish Times about a restaurant I had in Phuket in 2015. And the most watched, commented and liked video in this channel's history is the sequel to that video where I told you the whole story in a little bit more detail. So this video that you're watching right now is the sequel to that sequel, the what happened next portion of the story and how I opened what is quite possibly the least successful business in Thai history. If you've enjoyed this video, please do press subscribe. And if you or someone you know in the Samui area has an interesting story you'd like to share, please do get onto me at the address on screen now. Come on, love. I guess by now we're probably at late 2016 and the chef that I had, that I told you about in the last part, that had been heavily pregnant, has now had a child. Her boyfriend is planning to stay at home and look after the kid. I forget what he did for a living, but he was able to look after the child, which meant that she was free to come back to work. Now I bumped into her one day and we had a chat and she was up for doing something, coming back to work for me again. Now since then I'd moved from Shillong down to Rawai and I really liked Rawai a lot more. So one night I was out having a couple of beers at a place called Banana on Sai Yuan. So right now we are on the Sai Yuan Road in Rawai in Phuket and we are directly outside the Banana complex. Now Banana has got two sides, although this one seems to have been given a different name these days. But they were the same place and kind of like Laguna which I showed you before it's lots of separate businesses under the one roof and there's lots of girls and stuff here at night time so it's a similar setup where you've got lots of bars under one roof with one sound system it's owned by one person but each bar is rented out by different people and they, they're all separate businesses so you only make money if if you, if you, if they only make money if you're drinking in their exact bar. Let's go in here for a second. So, many years ago, sort of 2015, 2016, early 2017, so drinking here every now and then. I wouldn't say I was a regular, but I used to be in. And like I say, each bar has its own boss. And if you drink at one, the the, the, the other ones don't make money but they all operate on one sound system and stuff. So anyway, I'd been in here a few times and I'd gotten to know a few of the people and I noticed that at night time, there was nowhere in this area to eat at all. So after a few drinks, I'd be pretty hungry and I'd be like, where can, where can you eat around here? And there wasn't anywhere. And you had to, they were losing their customers basically because you had to drive across to Laguna where there was a few trucks and the Simon did kebabs and stuff and so I said to them if you had a business here that served food late at night people wouldn't have to leave they wouldn't even need to stand up they could tell you what they wanted you could make the order I'd bring the food to them and when they were finished I'd come and take their rubbish away and that won't even sell drinks alcohol or anything I'll just sell food and then there's no way I can be stepping on your toes trying my best to be as courteous as possible with this idea now anyone I said it to in the area was like what a great idea it would work it would work now bananas not super busy but I figured if I could get a few people to come from there and then build up a bit of a name so that people were actually coming specifically for the food so I was naming it the same as my old business and I took some of the best selling items that we made that were quick to make like our chicken burger beef burger stuff like that you know, chicken nuggets homemade chips stuff like that good pub like while you're drinking beer good stuff for that and now these days you've got grab bikes and stuff so it's a lot easier you could just order online and just tell them to come here but at the time if people wanted to drink they had to drive to a different part of town you weren't going to come back so they were losing all their customers now if you look over here the furthest left there's a a bit of roofing that sticks out further than the rest right and there's also some um, floor here, tiled flooring in what is otherwise a, a, a car park. Now they exist because of me. So she said she's free, she could work evenings and nights and that. So I'm like, that's perfect, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And I trusted her, she's a nice lady. And I took her up and I showed her where I was thinking of doing it and told her what I was thinking of doing. I also explained to her there and then what the wage structure would be. Now I was gonna 
give her a wage and I told her no matter what happens if we don't have one single customer you will always get that money at the end of the month I said but if we can make this work I said let's split everything I said as soon as half of the profit is more than your basic wage I'll increase your wage so that you get half of whatever the profit is so the more money we make the more money you make fantastic I said go talk to your boyfriend tell him all about what I've said shortly afterwards I heard back from her perfect let's run now for me this was the first and the most important hurdle to overcome there's no way I would have started another business in Thailand without thinking that I had some reliable staff and without the support of this lady I would not have gone one step further with this idea so obviously you need reliable staff for any business but I especially needed it because I wasn't going to be working in this business and after the first few days I wasn't even planning on being around all the time and checking what was going on so I needed someone that I knew was going to turn up every day on time and not have their fingers in the till or anything and with this lady I felt I really had that um, she's a nice lady so I managed to get in touch with the owner a Thai man and I came here to see him we had a chat and we negotiated and I ended up getting a really really good price now it is only a small bit of land and we very quickly agreed terms and um, what he asked for was very reasonable and he agreed to come and meet my lawyer because I wanted to make sure he definitely owned everything, that everything was legit, that he couldn't just suddenly up the rent or say, oh, you can't be here or whatever. We signed the contract and I think I paid him for about six months up front, which as you're about to hear was a mistake, but financially it really, it wasn't much money. So I came and I said, what, what sort of things do you want? And he said, do whatever you want, that's your space. You know, it's yours to do with what you want. So I made up this big, had it made, it took a couple of weeks, but um, massive bamboo hut. Now this bamboo hut was mint. I had designed it, we designed it together and it had two hatches, one for ordering, one for giving the food out. It had a, a floor so that you weren't actually stood on the floor, you were raised up a little bit. And I still had a lot of the equipment that I needed that I'd held onto from the restaurant just for this small little project. Because really all I wanted to do was a kiosk in the first place. So I figured if this kiosk could just get a bit of a name for itself, it would do all right. And by using my old business name, maybe people would recognize it and et cetera, et cetera. So I was good to go basically, really cheap. So I went, we signed the contracts. I had this bamboo hut made and it was so heavy and it took about six people to get it off when they delivered it. We put it where we, the space that I'd rented and I went away and four or five hours I came back with some of the stuff to load it up and it was gone. And it was across the road in the car park. And so I'm like, that's taken quite a few people to lift that across there. That, you know what I mean? So I've called up the landlord and he's like, oh, we've got a problem. Now, by now I've obviously paid him and we signed the contracts and everything. So he's like, oh, the people are complaining that you put that bamboo hut there. I'm like, I asked you, I, I asked you what I could do and what I could not do. He's like, well, you, they're not happy, so I've had to move it. Why don't you just run out of the car park? I'm like, no, mate, we didn't agree anything about me being stuck down in the back of a car park. So I'm supposed to be on the main road, that's what we agreed. So he's like, yeah, that's your space, do whatever you want with it, but don't block their light. Yep. So I'm like, right, okay, I'll use that for storage. Pain in the arse means every night I've got to take everything out of storage and put it across. And then at the end of the night, put everything back into the bamboo hut and lock it up and that. But anyway, yeah, okay, no problem. So I'm like, there's no roof here. We're stood on old, like, concrete. This is basically just a car park. So I had to get someone to come in and because there was no, it was, it was out in the air. So I had to get someone to come in and make a, a little roof. And then also I didn't like that the floor was just like road basically. So I got someone to come in and lay down some tiles and stuff. Very basic, very, very basic. And again, not particularly expensive. And so before I even got going, the owner of the bar that I was closest to came, he ended up being from England. And I think he was trying to intimidate me. It didn't work. And the, um, just sort of trying to throw his weight about and blah, blah. and I was just like, mate, I, I don't understand this. I, I spoke with your staff before I did this and they 
told me they thought it was a good idea. I said, if anything, me being closest to your business is going to help you. He's like, ah, the smell of food coming in. And, and it's basically an outdoor business, so that wasn't going to be a problem anyway. But um, he's like, it's not going to work. And, blah. and I was like, well, cool, if it doesn't work, I won't be here for long, will I? So I'll go away and then you'll have the, the place to yourself again. He's like, well, I'm going to make sure it doesn't work. I'm never going to help you. I'm going to make sure that I say, yeah, I was just like, you're being a prick, mate. You know what I mean? So that was me and him not getting on with each other. And so that's the story of setting it up in a nutshell. But how does this potentially good idea go on to be one of the least successful businesses in Thai history? Come to opening night. So it comes to opening night and he's sat there and his missus is sat there. They're in a bad mood. We've opened up a lot earlier than we normally would because I wanted her to make a load of pad krapao and stuff like that. And then we went and I started giving all food to all the different bars saying, look, we've just opened. Here's our menu. If any of your customers are hungry, tell them they don't need to leave. We'll bring the food to here. You're going to make more money. They're like, oh, nice one, nice one, you know. That was all fine. Finally, you know, we, there wasn't like some big launch party or anything. I just opened and said, let's see what happens. So after not too long, a family come along and there's four of them and they order food and they sit at the exact guy who's been giving me problems bar while they're waiting for the food and order drinks. So I'm saying to him, do you see? Like, this is the first night, like they weren't gonna come in here. Like you've just made money because I'm not even selling soft drinks. I said, I'm not doing anything to start. I couldn't be doing more to actually try and get on with you. And he's like, yeah, I, I don't care. It's just, it's not going to work and all this. And I'm just like, so short-sighted, mate. Anyways, he was right. It didn't work because <laughs> within a few hours we were closed and we never opened again. Um, they were literally the only customers I ever got. Um, and it wasn't because of this guy. What happened was... My cook, her boyfriend showed up with the baby and started sitting right beside her. And I'm like, he was, you know, that's fine, whatever, it's normal. But then an hour goes past, hour and a half, two hours, and he's still sat there. And by now it was like half 10, 11 at night. And I'm thinking, why doesn't he just take the kid home? And then I look at my, 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 my cook and she's doing something and she's crying at the same time. And I'm like, what's wrong? And she's like, I'm really sorry, I can't do it. Can't do it, he doesn't like it. And I was like, but I showed you where it was and I told you the hours you'd be working and everything. And she's like, he, he came and he doesn't like that it's all bar girls. He doesn't like that it's drunk farangs and, and people trying to find women and stuff. And he doesn't want me to be around it. I'm sorry, I can't do it. And so we had to pack everything into the bamboo hut. And that was the last time I ever opened. That was it. One night we did. And it wasn't even a full night. We were supposed to stay there till about 1, 1.30. I don't even remember what time we packed up. I'd be surprised if it was 11 p.m. So there you go. So for anyone watching that's not familiar with Thai law, you're probably thinking, well, why didn't you just run it yourself, you lazy bastard? And um, if I could have, I would have, believe me. And in fact, if I could run a small little business, I'd have one right now. And the problem is that even when you have a nice big business, getting a work permit isn't all that simple and there are rules you have to follow. And for this particular one, when I went to see my lawyer, she told me that there was no point in registering this and that I would never be able to get a work permit for it. Basically, this idea was too small. It wasn't Farang worthy. Um, I could own it, but I could never be seen running it or have anything to do with it, basically. Basically a glorified street food stall. It was like a, a stationary burger van or whatever. Between the annoying neighbors and I knew already how hard it was to find trustworthy staff. I got onto one girl who had worked for me before and she was just like, nah, I'm all right, I'm doing okay, I've got a decent job. And I was like, okay, no problem. And that was it. So you wanna talk about a failed business, that is a failed business where you make that much effort. Now, like I say, what did I lose? You'd be surprised how little it was. All the cooking equipment and stuff I already had. I had to buy groceries and that for the, for the first couple of days. I mean, I probably ate most of what I didn't cook. Uh, I'd say very little of that went to waste. I still ended up selling the stuff that I'd used. So the bulk of this video was recorded around three months ago. And at the time I was just sort of ad-libbing. I hadn't really considered any of the facts and figures. But in the meantime, I've had a chance to sort of let it marinate in my brain. And especially over the last couple of days while I've been editing it together, 
um, some numbers sort of jumped out at me. Now I'm fairly sure the bamboo hut cost me 12,000 baht. And the roofing that I got after I had to get rid of the bamboo hut, I'm guessing, but this number came to me and I feel quite confident, 10,400 baht. And the flooring was just done by my landlady's friends and I, I bought the stuff, the materials myself, 2,000, 2,500. So you're basically saying 25,000 baht all in for that. And then it's just whatever I paid in rent. And now I genuinely cannot remember what the price was that he, that he charged me or that we settled on. I know for sure it wasn't more than 5,000 a month and it definitely wasn't less than 3,000 a month, but it could have been anywhere in between that. I feel like if it was five, I probably would have felt that that was too much. It is just a tiny little patch on, on the ground. Three and a half, four sounds about right. Three and a half would have been 100 euros. 4,000 would have been 100 pounds. I think I could have easily justified that. Even if I'd paid him six months up front at 4,000, that would have been uh, 24,000. So all in all, I probably lost around 50,000 baht. Now look, that's not ideal. I could have done quite a lot with that money. But given the potential returns on it, it was a very, very small investment and a very, very small risk. Obviously on this occasion it didn't work out, but if you were to give me the exact same sort of percentage, uh, let's say all the variables were the exact same and the percentage of um, success was the same, I'd take it. I would definitely roll the dice again because what I lost compared to what I could have won, um, I think it was well worth the risk. Even if the business had done quite badly, I think it would have gotten at least 20,000 baht a month. And then on a good month, it might have gotten maybe 40,000 baht a month. But even if I'd managed to average, once it got up and running after the first few months, if I'd managed to average, say, 10,000 baht a month, obviously that wasn't going to feed me, but it was something for nothing is the way I saw it because I wasn't going to be working there and within five months i'd have had all my money back so however long that business stayed open it was just free money from there on it was just a little bit in my pocket every month without having to do anything and the bamboo hut stayed there for a, about a year in the car park and i knew from experience because i owned the bamboo hut before selling them i had to give the first one away i literally had to give it away because i kept on lowering the price and i wasn't getting one single phone call i wasn't getting an inquiry and so finally, I said to one of my staff members, if you know anyone that'll take that, just if they've got a van, just, and the things weigh, they weigh so much, it's not like you can just move it to a new place and hang up. So it was there for about a year, and eventually, I guess someone thought, I'm just gonna, probably the owner of Banana thought, oh, well, I'm claiming this, and he just kept it, <coughs> um, or sold it, or gave it to someone. And so, um, yeah that's what you call a failed business <laughs> one night and not even a full night four customers that were all together we brought in about 400 baht 500 baht or something so yeah you're talking to the the business maestro of of phuket here if you want business advice you come see me yeah you come see me